Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we're going to talk about the comic book industry as it relates to the MCU and some things that Kevin Feige, you know, the, uh, the end boss of Marvel, has said recently that seems to indicate that popularity of a comic book uh, title or character is not what they go by when greenlighting an MCU project. Duh. <laughs> How freaking duh. Because uh, it looks like Disney is scraping the bottom of the barrel at this point. They're, they're really relying heavily on obscure characters for Phase 4 and Phase 5 of the MCU. They're switching out uh, known characters like Tony Stark for presumably Riri Williams and other other kind of stand-in characters. Uh, we, you know, I, it's very obvious that Disney doesn't need comic books at all, like at all these days. And and we talk a lot about the comic book industry. And we talk about you know how important these publishers are, Marvel and DC, to their parent companies. And, and we've seen how Warner Media has treated DC Comics. They've, they've laid a bunch of people off, canceled a bunch of books, and now we might get a feel for how important comic books are to the Walt Disney Company. Uh, the short answer is they're not. Disney is going to do what they're going to do with the MCU, and it doesn't matter if the characters are popular or not. We're like, why is Ms. Marvel getting her own series? Why are they doing The Eternals? You know, why are they doing Shang-Chi? These are all characters that are, you know, not super, super popular characters that are getting their own shows, their own movies. It's kind of weird. But, you know, they, they gambled with Guardians of the Galaxy, again, which was a very obscure team, relatively obscure. And, uh, you know, a lot of it was created whole cloth and it wound up being a big hit for them. And so I think they, they're thinking that lightning is going to strike twice that they're going to, you know, strip mine some of these relatively obscure characters and make them household names like Spider-Man. And I don't know if it's going to work that well uh, for them. I really don't. Um, phase four, I'm, I'm losing. I've completely lost all. I'm going to be honest. I've lost all excitement for phase four. At this point, we, we see what direction is going in. It's definitely going to steer away from the Marvel Universe that we've known. They've said as much, even in the teaser, using Stan Lee's uh, anti-comics gate uh, spiel he did a couple years ago. Actually, it wasn't Stan Lee being anti-comics gate. It was people at Marvel Comics using Stan Lee. To kind of give uh, to kind of give comics gate the middle finger, and it didn't work out as well. Uh, I don't think as they'd hoped, but uh, Disney to use that audio to basically be like, hey, you know, we're uh, we're all one big family and we're going to we're going to be more diverse and inclusive. And yeah, um, they're going to include characters that never, ever, ever would have gotten their own series just a couple of years ago. And again, Disney, you know, I don't know if this is hubris. I don't know if they're like, well, we can do no wrong. We made the Guardians of the Galaxy happen. Uh, we can take these obscure characters and, and make them work. And they might be able to. I mean, you know, it's hard to believe, but 15 years ago, the Avengers were kind of a B-list team. You know, it was basically everything that wasn't Spider-Man, X-Men, or Fantastic Four. Disney took it, ran with it, and created the MCU. So, yeah, is it possible they could they could build these characters up to be something? Yeah. Do I have faith that they will? No. Because <laughs> we see some of these interviews, and we see some of the people that they're talking to now to uh, direct some of these movies, and we see what the uh, the the obvious uh, political angle is and we're like yeah this is going to be all about high fives on twitter and not about the box office and and you know frankly the comic books don't matter uh and we're going to talk about the direction of the marvel comics in this video too so before i get into it any further please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants here at clownfish tv we're opinionated opinionated pop culture uh, news and commentary. We do talk about comics. We talk about Disney. We talk about uh, movies. Whatever interests us that day. And this was pretty interesting. Uh, bounding in the comics. I'm going to put a link in the comments section to this article. They picked up on something that Kevin Feige said in this big men's health, which is a weird venue, men's health uh, you know, interview that they had with him where he's talking about how he regretted whitewashing the character of the Ancient One in Doctor Strange. Now, uh, 
I actually liked Tilda Swinton quite a bit. I thought she was very, very good. In fact, uh, when they announced that they were going to do, or they speculated they were going to do a, a female doctor for the 13th doctor, she was the first person that popped in my head as a good choice. I'm like, Tilda Swinton would be amazing as the doctor. And of course, we, we didn't get that. But she was the ancient one in the Doctor Strange movie. And the reason that they, they made the ancient one a Celtic woman, I believe, was because of China. Because uh, the ancient one in the comics is, I, I think, Tibetan, and they didn't want to go there. They wanted uh, Doctor Strange to make bank in China. So we see how they make these decisions uh, to appeal to a Chinese audience, right? And, um, you know, I mean, so they made the character Celtic and uh, didn't even go anywhere near Asian culture or whatever. But Kevin Feige said he regretted that. But he also said, buried in this article... That the, the, the comic book's popularity is not a factor in the movie and TV adaptations. And that's, that's a new development. That is um, what was uh, some YouTubers were calling it uh, Bolshevik marketing, where they're not actually sitting back and watching to see which comic book properties do well and then create movies and TV shows and animated series based on popularity. They're basically taking something or the beginnings of an idea and saying, we're going to make it popular. We will make this popular, even if it isn't. This is where Disney is at right now. So coming from Bounding in the Comics, uh, Kevin Feige says comic book popularity is not a factor in movie and TV adaptations. Uh, he recently declared that the popularity of comic book or comic book characters has not been a factor in the film's movie and TV adaptations. That's going to be truer going forward because they've run out of hell even b-list marvel heroes at this point like they're really scraping the bottom of the barrel you know for characters that you've probably never heard of and honestly shang chi would have probably been an iron fist movie had they not already done the iron fist show um but you know they would have made sure that danny Rand was asian because that was that was a huge deal that was a huge deal so during the interview talking about Shang-Chi, Feige referenced the X-Men and Blade films when he stated that sort of proved early on it wasn't about how famous the character was, but how, about how great their potential was for becoming a cool movie or series of movies. Well, the X-Men was one of the top selling Marvel comic books of all time. <laughs> That's why it got greenlit, right? Um, and uh, Blade had Wesley Snipes. And uh, he was badass. In fact, I just bought the Blade trilogy on DVD, so I had a physical copy of it. And uh, he was he was absolutely badass. And this is back in the 90s. Everybody talks about diversity and representation. I just to take a sidestep here. Back in the 90s, we had Blade. We had Spawn. You know, uh, I went to the theater to go see Blade 1 and 2. I went to the theater to see Spawn. I didn't think anything of it. Uh, but, you know, please do tell me again how uh, diversity and inclusion was just invented uh, current year. And Blade was a huge hit. Spawn was a pretty decent hit, I guess. And then they had their own, you know, they had the Spawn series on HBO. And um, it was pretty good. You know, and Spawn's still doing really well, by the way. Anyway, um, yeah, Blade wasn't terribly famous, but it was a kick-ass vampire hunter movie with a, a huge bankable box office star. So according to men's health writer Evan Romero, Romano, Feige also explained the reason why Shang-Chi did not show up in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, despite being on their list for a long time, is because there was limited space to fit in characters needing, needed during the lead-up to Avengers Infinity War. Feige stated, once we finish what we call the Infinity Saga, we rolled up our sleeves and said, okay, what's next? What are we going to kick off? What are we going to kick off the next? The next. Uh next sort of evolution of the MCU post our big first big saga. And that's why Shang-Chi was at the very top of the list. So Shang-Chi was supposed to come out earlier, I guess. Uh, Romano adds, because Shang-Chi is a fairly obscure character, the studio can rewrite and modernize his stories in ways that would be far less noticeable than updating more widely known stories like those of Captain America, Spider-Man, or the Incredible Hulk. Well, they're going to do it anyway. Feige would also indicate Shang-Chi received top billing because he appeals to China. He states it's about having a foot in both worlds, in the North American world and in China. So, remember Mulan? Remember Raya and the Last Dragon? Yeah, they didn't do so well. Uh, you know, Remember how you sidelined Finn? 
in the sequel trilogy for no good reason other than to possibly appeal to Chinese audiences. Yeah, I'm just putting that out there. I'm just putting that out there. Uh, But yeah, it it shows where they're at right now, that they really don't care about the comic books. So why bother publishing comic books at all? They're just gonna just gonna run with the MCU and take it in totally different directions. They're gonna race swap characters, they're gonna gender bend characters, uh, they're gonna create characters whole cloth. You know, I mean, this is what they're gonna do, guys. This is what phase four and phase five are gonna be. And it's not that the House of Ideas is coming up with a lot of good ideas. Remember Snowflake and Safe Space? Yeah, nobody remembers them. I don't think the book ever came out. Did the book ever come out? I don't think it ever came out. But even Pink News was slamming them. Even Kate Leth was slamming them. They said that these characters were such poorly conceived stereotypes that it was almost like a meme. And they were the irony in all of this is that we had uh, two, two black non-binary characters and they made such a big deal about it is that they were created by a straight white millionaire. You know, who thought he was woke, who thought he was uh, progressive. And I think they just sort of, I, I don't know what happened to him. I don't know if they just kind of buried these characters or what, but they're very, very current year. And, uh, you know, I can't blame Kevin Feige for not taking a cue from the comics if this is the best Marvel can do at this point. I think the House of Ideas is running out of ideas. Uh, you know, we'll see where the comic books go, go as far as sales are concerned. Um, everything I've I've read, and you know, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't really keep a real close tab on the mainstream comic book industry because there's very little there that that interests me anymore. But it, it seems to be reliant on events and uh, multiple number ones and all of this uh, to 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 basically just keep going as is. And, uh, you know, there is going to come a day and probably in the not too distant future where Disney is going to be like, yeah, why do we even publish these comics? Why do we even publish these comics anymore? when we can just, you know, just make shit up uh, ourselves. We just hire some comic book writers. We'll go get Mark Miller or something come in and he can create a whole bunch of new characters for us. And it doesn't matter if we've got these characters in the comics or not, because we're going to change it all anyway. You know, <laughs> who the hell cares? Where's the Silver Sable movie? Where's the, uh, what was it? Uh, US-1, the uh, the trucker superhero. Where's that Where's that movie? You know, I want to know. So there we go, guys. That is, the, that is the state of Marvel right now. That explains so much. Uh, explains why they're picking these obscure characters because it is easier for them to make progressive changes, basically. Make more progressive changes to characters that people don't recognize than it is to mess with like Spider-Man or something. So gonna wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later.